that new wheel. Hey, who's in the do trip? And we're live. Welcome to Bet Records, where we talk about hot topics, ideas, and all the shit you really want to hear. What do we want to hear? We know what you guys want to hear. The biggest, one of the biggest UFC events so far, probably this year. Justin, would you agree with that? <clears throat> Best fight of the year. Best fight of the As year. Of now and most likely will be the biggest fight of the year. UFC 272, you boys. Josh and Justin going to it live, live. as well. Uh, Justin, opening thoughts, opening statement. What do we got? Uh, kind of breaking down this fight. We got the main event, Masvidal versus Covington coming to you live. The two biggest names in bet records are taking on Sin City. We'll be at UFC the biggest names, yep. live. Wow. Cannot wait. <laughs> we have the biggest grudge match in UFC history. Best friends, former roommates, turned rivals. Colby, Chaos Covington versus Jorge, Game Bread, Masvidal. A grudge I don't know match. about you guys, but... After watching the embedded, the first two episodes and the countdown, I got goosebumps every single second watching that. What are you guys' goosebumps. thoughts on it? Goosebumps, definitely way to put it. Um, I mean, these guys have been going back and forth at each other. When was that uh, initial? I mean, I believe it was Jorge that started, you know, throwing something about the journeyman. Was was that Jorge that started that kind of nope. little beef? That was Covington, huh? No, it was Covington. It was Covington. Okay. So, when was the, when did that happen? So it all started about roughly 10 years ago. Colby Covington, all-American wow. wrestler at Oregon State. Upon graduating, he, he wished to transition to MMA, and he submitted an application to American Top Team down in Coconut Creek, Florida, about trying out for their pro team to become an MMA fighter. They accepted his application in the tryout. Jorge Masvidal saw something in him in him in the tryout inside uh, the tree out at the tryout tree out and he decided tree in. he said i see something in this kid i want to train with him i want him to be my training partner i want him to teach me wrestling and he's gonna and he's gonna teach me striking hmm. and that's how it all started and as soon as all that happens the friendship started to form while Jorge was already a professional MMA fighter, a couple few fights into his MMA career, he was making money, and the two formed a bond together that they were going to make over, that they were going to take over the UFC, take over the MMA world, make all the money, and they started a team. It was called Team Easy Money. And now, friendship's over. Friendship's over. They will over. be meeting each other Saturday night. The beef has begun. Uh, I was just looking at their stats because I always like to pick the guy with the you know longer reach. It just kind of makes sense. But um, starting kind of with their height, actually, they're both five foot nine. It appears they're both going to be 170 pounds. And uh, Masvidal just beats him by two inches. Masvidal that 74 inch reach. Kobe Covington 72 inches here. Um, with their with their fighting styles, is there does someone have an advantage or a disadvantage coming into this fight? Uh, kind of started off here. Well, each one has an advantage in their own specialty. Jorge obviously has the advantage if they're just going to stand up and kickbox the entire time. As we know, Jorge Masvidal has lethal hands, lethal kicks, and Ben Askren knows best. He has lethal knees, especially, especially his right with, one. within five seconds of the yeah. fight. Yeah. I think it's going to really come down to um, whether he can get him to the ground or not. Um, as we saw in all, both of the Usman fights, really, he really, Kobe had a really tough time getting him to the ground. And uh, when he's standing upright, that's obviously not his strength. He, he, he doesn't look terrible, but he's definitely not a high-level striker um, by any means. Uh, compared to Masvidal's, obviously, that's where he stands. So I think it's really going to come down to that first, first round and that first takedown attempt by Colby. If he can get him to the ground, I think he's going to have a pretty successful fight. Um, but if he if he's unable to do it like he was in the Usman fights, um, I think it's going to be a lot closer, and it's really just going to come down to conditioning, which if it goes five rounds, I'm really going to, again, give it to Colby just because I don't think Masvidal is a five-round fighter. Um, but, it's again, he's got the knockout power, so if they're standing up the whole fight, round two or three are going to be the ones you're going to want to watch 
because those are going to be the Masvidal kill rounds, whereas if he's going to win, those are the rounds he's going to win in. Well, Josh, um, about those Usman fights you brought up. Yeah. So in the first fight between Usman and Colby, when I, I rewatched that fight a couple days ago, I've watched that fight multiple times since it happened in the past two years, and when I really look at the beef between Colby and Usman, that first fight to me was neither one of them wanted to take it to the ground. There was yeah. zero takedown attempts in that fight. Those guys just wanted to settle it like men, and it just turned into a kickboxing match, which, unfortunately, Usman got the best of Colby, just wore him down. As with Masvidal in his first meeting with Usman on six days' notice in the first appearance of Fight Island in Abu Dhabi, it was just Usman grinding him out, getting those takedowns, and playing footsie with him on the cage. <laughs> yeah. And in the second fight with Usman and Colby, we did see a little bit of a different approach. We did see, we finally sound, saw some takedown attempts from both sides. I think Usman took him down twice. Colby attempted a couple takedowns, didn't succeed on the stats, but there was one in particular where I thought Colby did get the takedown. Oh, yeah, we talked about but that. But... Daniel Cormier, who um, just lost his mother yesterday. I was watching Michael Bisbang today and giving, giving shout-outs to DC. I hope he gets through it. I wish his family the best of luck and all that. And I'm sorry for your loss, Daniel Cormier. Um, Daniel Cormier called that a takedown during the fight, but people doing the stats didn't. But... Is he going to be at 272? Who? Daniel Cormier? Cormier? Cormier, nope. I say with that, I reason, figured, was maybe not. I figured but. not, but who's gonna take his place if they Michael announced? Bisping. Ah, Michael Bisping. Michael Bisping. Even I was watching his show. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really an like hour Bisping. Ago, and he said because <laughs> because Daniel Cormier is stepping out, he's gonna be stepping in for him. Yeah. At least Obviously, we got Joe Rogan, I, I, right? I'm not sure if Joe. I haven't heard anything. Well, who's gonna step Johnny. in if Bisping and or so it'll for be Joe. Bisping, John Anik, and I really feel like Joe Rogan will be there. Because who else? Who would come Yeah, who's your third guy? I don't right. think they have a... I don't think they have Dominic, another guy. They only got one backup, right? Yeah, who yeah. else would take his place? Dominic Cruz, Paul Felder. Oh, gross. Um, like Paul. a celebrity person. Conor McGregor, dude, that'd be so entertaining. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Yeah. No, not Snoop no, Dogg. No, no, no. Conor McGregor would be Conor pretty entertaining. Sure. He'd probably <laughs> do it, too, if they called him up. Yeah. I don't know. But um, <laughs> if you watch... So a lot of people have been comparing how this fight's going to go based off both their... Both Colby and Jorge's performances against Kamaru Usman. Usman. If we look at how Jorge Masvidal looked against Usman, the first fight, on six days' notice, it was kind of a sloppy fight for both guys. The first one was just Usman just big-brothering Jorge all five rounds, playing with his feet, um, <laughs> taking him down, just rubbing him out. And rubbing him out. then the second fight... It was a little different. Jorge got knocked out <laughs> cleanly by Usman. Badly. And then we look at the two fights Colby had with Kamaru. The first fight, classic. Colby fell, fell and lost in the final round on a controversial stoppage apparently to some people. But at the end of the day... It was a great fight. It was very close. And the second fight we got between them in November in Madison Square Garden, another close fight. Yep. The way I see it is Colby Covington is the biggest threat to Kamar Usman. He's the only guy who has fought him that made Kamar Usman look beatable. Jorge Masvidal just went in there and just looks like just like another victim, another yep. <laughs> check mark. On Kamara Usman's list. On his record list, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Usman made it look easy against Masvidal. He had a hard time with Colby. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, so um, kind of in that breakdown we were watching about, you know, the Ben Askren knee, the you know quickest knockout in UFS, UFC history, all of that. Um, do you think there's a possibility of a, of a fake knee at the beginning from Masvidal or does. something kind of pre-planned that he, he might kind of do in He this pretty fight? much always does at this point. Since that knee, 
Pretty much every fight, he runs up like he's gonna do the knee, whether he does it or not. It's just like except in the Usman fights. <clears throat> did he yeah. not do it? I know I see I know the once, last the last but, fight yeah. he was in, he did it. So the fight before the Ben Askren fight against Darren Till in London, <clears throat> Masvidal raised the start of the bell, ran up full speed to do a, a body kick on Till. Yeah, he kicked him in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> and immediate stoppage Moss when I was put his hands up he's like well and praise is like my bad my yeah. bad yep yep not too excited in there but my thing about that flying knee with fighting against Ben Askren that was planned because they knew <clears throat> Ben Askren did not want to stand and trade with Jorge and Ben Askren was a favorite going in that fight because they knew Jorge didn't have takedown defense yeah. and Ben was going to get him down easily so Mike Brown, Dan Lambert, all the guys at AT&T, American Top Team, shout out in Coconut Creek, Florida. They said, okay, we know this guy's going to shoot for takedowns. Why not make him shoot right away? Let's devise a plan to get him to shoot. Sure, sure. And Jorge, on that flying knee, if you watch that again, as soon as it started, hands behind his back against the fence. Fight, Jason Herzog said. Jorge moved to his left, which was where Ben Askren is comfortable taking someone down when someone's at his right. Yep, to try and grapple, yep. And Jorge ran. Ben was like, okay, right where I need him. Me. Yeah, that's the thing with Masvidal, too, and that's the biggest example, obviously, is he just sets small traps to kind of, you know, look good for the other opponent. Oh, this is my, you know, this is where I like to tackle. This is where I want to, you know, get my big power shot or something, right? Kind of traps him and feeds him in almost, and then kind of, you know, counterattacks at that yeah. point. Kind of going back to that Ben Askren one there as well. Um, do you think, I'm just looking at the records here, Masvidal's fought 50 times and Covington's only fought uh, 19, actually. Do you think, A, this is a big factor? Masvidal's just been through a lot more fights. Do you think Covington has just been really more selective? Do you think Masvidal has an advantage for seeing more fighters? What, what, is there anything that gives someone an advantage with their records? Hey, Trent, pull your phone back up and look at that records, at the records again. Yep. How many losses does Jorge Masvidal have on his record? Fifteen. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. That's true. But uh, he does have double the wins. Have? He does have double the wins as Covington. Kobe is 16 and 3 you know losses. If, um, Jorge is 35 and 15 losses. You know, if Kobe is a retired right now, didn't even fight on Saturday. If Jorge Masvidal fought 20 times in a row, won all 20, he would still have a lower winning percentage than Colby Covington. That's fair. Damn. That's fair. Masvidal is definitely the most experienced guy. That Colby has ever fought. And I really think it's going to be just a dirty boxing match. I do believe these guys, because when Colby fought Usman for the first time, there was obviously a lot of beef. There was personal hatred. And after the first fight, when it all ended, I was like, you know, I'm not surprised that the fight went this way. These guys didn't want to go to the ground. They wanted a statement win against each other. Mm -hmm. Because... A submission win isn't really like, like no one's going to be jumping out of their seats saying, whoa, right. like if you knock someone clean out, it's, it's all about the highlight reel all over ESPN, all over Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And that's why I saw that in the first Usman Covington fight. I think we're going to see that here. I think these guys specifically Colby because Jorge doesn't want to go to the ground with Colby. Nope. We've seen the home videos of back when they used to be friends and even training together. Mm -hmm. Jorge is smart not to even attempt to take Colby down. And probably most of his grappling knowledge is from Covington. You know, at the same time, if they train with each other for that long, obviously, you know, not fully, but I feel like at least a lot of his background might be from Covington in those early kind of years as well. Because when, because when Colby tried out for American Top Team, Jorge was the leader of the recruiting class and he's the guy who took Colby in right and he worked closely with Colby saying this guy can really help me out with my wrestling vice versa he can I can help him out with his striking I don't think we've ever seen a fight where two guys that know each other better have had more personal experience together mm -hmm. I can't think the next 
the next um the next past matchup that comes to mind is Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz. They were friends going into it. Tito was the champion, and Chuck was up and rising in the light heavyweight rankings. And everyone's telling Tito, "You need to fight Chuck," but Sh Tito was like, "No, he's my friend. I, I, I just can't bring it to me to fight him." But then Chuck won a couple fights, and he's like, "Tito, we just need to fight." And then the beef started because they had agreed not to fight because of their friendship. And then all of a sudden, the rivalry took place. They fought three times. Chuck won the first two. And after Chuck Liddell retired, eight years, eight year layoff, Oscar De La Hoya put on a Golden Boy Promotions MMA to bring 49 year old Chuck Liddell to fight 44 year old Tito Ortiz. Yep. And Chuck got knocked out, which is just disgraceful. Yeah. But we won't get into that. No. <laughs> Everyone knows how much I hated that fight. And no, that's how a fact. Oscar put that together. Yeah, that's a fact. Well, we'll see what happens, I guess. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I was gonna say that was gonna lead me into my final question here. Do you think this beef is just for show and to promote the fight? Do you think this truly is stemming from you know past experiences of you know Colby not paying the trainers and all that stuff? Do you think, I think it's, it's from mix, ATT? Honestly. You know, I think it's more. I think it's more like actual hatred, but I think there is a, a a level of promoting that they, you know, you do when you're a fighter like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think most of it is true. I mean, it's obviously all true stuff. I just think they're like Hollywood pushing it a little. Yeah, more they're, and they're like promote. they're making it more of a Hollywood thing to where it sounds like way worse than it actually happened. Like maybe Colby only owed the the trainer like a thousand bucks or something not thirteen thousand but thirteen thousand obviously is like holy shit that's a lot of money yeah you know what i mean like some shit like that i bet is is fake but so you guys know the story on why colby turned heel right why he turned what turned heel it's a pro wrestling term for like a character oh yep heel yep is yep because essentially the fans didn't attach to him yeah he was a brute fighter but he did have a <clears throat> character essentially right is so that when, correct so colby Covington in his career leading up to um his ufc he was a couple he was four fights in the ufc he was he was 12 and 0 and or no he was he was 12 and 1 i know he lost to uh, worley alves in a submission at ufc 194 and he was a great fight he, he is a great fighter and going to the Dong Young Kim fight in Singapore, um, so he beat Dong Young Kim by decision. And afterwards, Dan Lambert, the head of uh, American Top Team, the owner, the manager, he said right after that fight, he flew out to Singapore. As soon as Colby won the fight, Sean Shelby, the main matchmaker for the UFC, went up to Dan Lambert and said, if he doesn't really do anything... Like, do anything that's more fan-friendly, like, you know, excite the fans. Like, yep. we're, we're thinking about cutting him. Yep. And then Brazil happens. And then, so, he told Colby that, and unfortunately, Colby just, he was hurt by that. He's like, I'm, I'm going out in every performance. I'm working hard. I'm winning very easily. But the fans are saying, the UFC is saying, we don't like your style, Colby. Like... You, you're a great fighter, but you're not really appealing to the fans. Yep. And then... Don't get attention. And then... Then, Colby Covington, because of his very great fighting style, landed a matchup with the greatest jiu-jitsu practitioner MMA has ever seen, Damian Maia, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in the co-main event of Derek Brunson versus Leota Machida. Mm. Going into the fight, you guys need to know, if you fight in Brazil and you're not a Brazilian, you're gonna get you are going to get a hard time from the fans. The fans <laughs> will not leave you home will not leave you alone. They have Damn. an old saying there. It's called U Vamo He, you will die. Oh god. They chant that to anyone who's not Brazilian walking in there, you will die. Vu Vamo He. Weird. And so, going into that fight, they told Colby, whether you win or lose, we're not going to re-sign you. We don't like your style. 
listen, you're a great fighter, but the fans just aren't excited to watch you. Colby Covington goes out there against number three, Damian Maya, leaves him in a pool of blood. <laughs> and I'm not even over-exaggerating. Watch the final round of that fight. Colby left him in the middle of the octagon, pool of blood, walks out, wins decisively. Decision comes, Colby won. No contention. Yep. And then he cut that promo. He called the Brazilians who were booing him. He called the country of Brazil a dump. And he called all the citizens of Brazil filthy animals. Yep. Whole crowd just rained down booing. Throwing shit at him. I believe he was surrounded by like five to ten people to get out of the stadium at that point. Yep. He ran out. Daniel Cormier, the guy interviewing him, he even stood there. He didn't even pull the mic away. He just like he just nope. looked up. He's like, all right, keep going, buddy. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then he called out Tyron Woodley, ran out of the arena. He's like, bring my belt. Where are you at, Tyron Woodley? Walks out, barely made it out alive. He was hucked at with beer bottles, this and that. He had security around the clock in his hotel room until he left. Jeez. And that was the start of the character. And when he went back to American Top Team, a lot of the Brazilian teammates didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And it just it started the conflicts in the it gym. It started the ATT shit, huh? Probably. Yeah, not yeah. even with George, but then... With the community of the but, training people. Yeah, yeah makes but sense. as soon as that happened, the UFC was like, we can't cut this guy. We can't. Like, he just cut this huge promo. He insulted a whole nation. He made headlines. Yep. We cannot cut this guy. Nope. And it saved his career. Yeah, and look where he is here today, even, fighting this Saturday, March this, 5th. Listen, I understand why people hate Colby, but you, you just have to respect. He is a genius. It's the game. The stuff he has had. Oh, On the, the verge, almost, he was going to get cut. He pulled out this character. This is the biggest character the UFC has ever seen. Just full heel. Even bigger than uh, McGregor, huh? You think? See, McGregor's just... They're both the character in their McGregor, own right. McGregor, that's huh? just who... I don't want to... That's just who McGregor is. Like, Colby is from... All the interviews I've seen and people who actually know him, they say he is a genuine great guy. Humble, hardworking. That's mm -hmm. just a character. Mm -hmm. Like, he's really bringing in, because Colby's a big fan of pro wrestling. He brought that into the UFC. Oh, yeah. And from that stem, you were telling me, is the beef fake? I've been watching a lot of videos about that. There is a possibility it is fake, because... <laughs> When Colby and George were living together, they would sit down for hours talking, how are we going to take over the world? Yep. How are we going to make our money? That part of me just thinks, maybe this is all just a hoax. Yeah, well, it makes good press, you know, it makes good press. So. Exactly. Yeah. I don't... By the same time, you know, the way Colby is saying it, like, you know, Masvidal is quote unquote, you know, down here and I'm on top of the mountain peak or whatever he said. I feel like I would almost get it as well. Masvidal's fought we just looked at it three more times than Kobe Covington and again Kobe's still ranked higher than him after everything Jorge's been through. I don't know. So I feel like it's probably fifty fifty. I, I kinda agree with what Josh was saying. They kinda amped it up a little bit too. But kinda could you imagine fight. let's say this fight afterwards goes to a decision they announce the winner then they get up in each other's faces they look each other dead in the eye and they just look around they go okay i think they're good and yep. then they just shake hands hug each other and just put both their hands up and they're just like got you bitch they hold hands and skip down the aisle back to the <laughs> locker room <laughs> wouldn't doubt it no so when i really think about it when you put the pieces together this could be fake Absolutely. <laughs> Look at them right now. Yeah. They're both millionaires. They're superstars. This is everything that they ever wanted. Yep. I just don't... Like, if it's real, then wow. Yeah. 
Either way, there's a lot of history behind it, which makes it so tough. But you heard it here first from our UFC analyst, the hype and the beef is fake. We exposed it here That's for your live. <laughs> no, it's not. It's pretty 50-50. I do agree kind of what Josh was saying again. Kind of amped it up there. But uh, final couple thoughts here. Q-tip. Who do you got winning this main event this Saturday in Vegas? Colby. I think I have to pick Colby as well. Jorge's a bad fucking dude, bro. He's, he's a bad dude, but at the same time, I, I feel like Colby's been in half the fights. He's going to be trained a little bit better conditioning-wise. He's ranked number one versus, I think, Jorge's, what, number six, you said? Number six. Yeah. I, I think I got to go with Colby as well. Justin? You know me. I'm on the Colby train. Colby's my guy. Backed him since day one. I know the great fighter he is. I love his character. And I just think he's going to get it done. He's he is the most underappreciated guy on the roster. The fact that he's not in the pound for pound rankings to me is just an insult. <laughs> it's, he even said it after the post fight press conference with Usman. He said, "Oh, like oh, I go out there, I, like I put on a show, but I'm not in the pound for pound rankings. Why is that? Oh yeah, because everybody hates me. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Um, so me and Josh will be in Vegas for the fight." We'll try to get some interviews, try to get some pictures, some photo ops with some of the fighters around. Uh, yeah. So stay tuned, and you know it's going to be a good one. Be sure to buy the pay-per-view at ESPN Plus 272, Colby Covington versus Jorge Masvidal. Mm. Don't forget that. Thank you, Bet Records fans, and you have a great night. Peace. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. Justin and Josh will be posting live from the event. Thanks again for listening as always. Peace out. Peace out. I like how she move it. I like how she move it. I got that new whip. Jose the dude trip. I like how she move it. I like how she move it.